I'm your resident lame average techie and today we're going to show you how to configure security policies on Juniper SRX devices. So first things first, we're going to have a look at our setup here. We've got a PC connected to a QFX switch at site A. We've got a PC connected to a QFX switch at site B. So the objective for this lab would be for 192.168.1.10 to be able to reach 192.168.2.10. So let's have a look at our configuration on the switches here. So if we do a show pipe display set, pipe no more, you will see that I have interfaces XE000 connected to host one and XE001 connected to the SRX with a routable interface with an IP of 10.10.10.1 slash 30. If we have a look at site B, show pipe display set, no more. You'll see we have an identical set up here so also xe000 going to host one and xe001 going to the srx and this time with an ip address of 10 10 10 5 slash 30. we also have the routing in place so to be able to reach 192.168.1.0 slash 24 we have a next stop of 10 10 10 6. if we have a look at site a's routing we have the same in place to reach 192.168.2.10 slash 24 we have a next stop of 10 10 10 2. So if we have a look at the SRX config, that's not the SRX. So we do the same, show pipe display set. It's just a little bit easier in the display set format. You'll see we have GE000 connecting to site A. We have GE001 connecting to site B. And we have 10.10.10.2 configured on this interface and 10.10.10.6 configured on this interface. Then we also have the static routes to reach 192.168.1.10, we're going to send it to the switch with the IP 10.10.10.1. And to reach 192.168.2.0 slash 24, we're going to send it to the switch that has the IP 10.10.10.5. Right, so this would be site A and this would be site B. Okay, so with the routing in place, let's just go to our hosts here. Let's just see if we can actually ping our local gateways. So 1.10 uses a gateway of 1.1. .1. And you can see that it responds. So let's see if we can actually reach the other side, 2.10. And you'll see that we most probably won't be able to. Okay, so let's just go to 2.10 here. And we do the same. So ping 192.168.2.1, which is its local gateway. And you can see that it's responding. And if we ping 1.10 from here, we would get the same result as when we were pinging from 1.10. All right, so what is preventing the ping from happening? You'll notice that the SRX is sitting between the two sites here, and the SRX does not have an allow all policy, meaning that all traffic through the SRX is being blocked. So that means we need to create a security policy that allows traffic from this subnet to this subnet, or from this host to this host. Right, so the first thing that we need to do on this SRX is we need to define security zones. So we're going to go into edit security. So we're going to edit zones and that's where we're going to be. And we're going to give our security zone a name. So we're going to set security zone site A and set security zone site B. All right. Now you need to go back to your planning because you need to create address book entries for this. The address book entries will be used in the source and destination part of the policy. We'll get there. Um, once you define the security policy, you have to specify match criteria, and that is where the source and destination address book entries would come into play. So for the address book entry, we're going to create a specific address book entry for this host and another specific address book entry for this host. Okay, so we're going to go back to the SRX for that, and we are under the security zone stanza, so we will start with edit security zone site A, not like that, like this, and uh, for this we're going to use specific address book entries within the security zone. You can create global address book entries, but for the sake of this lab, we're going to create the address book entries within the specific zone. Okay, so you're going to start off with set address book address and if you type in question mark you'll see that the first thing you need to define is the address name so we're going to name it host one underscore 192.168.1.10 okay and we're going to give it an address of 
192.168.1.zen slash 32. So this is where you define the IP subnet or mask and seeing that it's only between two hosts, I'm just gonna create a slash 32. Okay, and if we do a show, this is what our address book entry would look like. If we go up one level, we're going to edit security zone site B and we're gonna do the same there, but obviously we're gonna change host one to 192.168.2.10 for the security zone. So the commands are exactly the same, set address book address, host one underscore 192.168.2.10. And just uh, going to do a question mark so you can see, we're going to define the IP with the prefix, which is 192.168.2.10 slash 32. Okay, so now you'll see that we have these address book entries under their respective security zones. So we've got host 1, 192.168.1.10 configured under site A, and then we've got host 1, 192.168.2.10 configured under site B. All right, so now we need to set up our security policy. So we go into edit policies, and we're going to set from zone. Remember, this is now we're going to enable communication from site A towards site B. So from zone site A to zone site B, and we're going to have to specify policy and a policy name. So we're just going to name it site A to site B. Okay. Now you also need to define the match criteria. So you type in match. We're going to do from source destination, so source address, sorry, and destination. So you have to say match source address. And in this flow, our source would be host1192.168.1.10. So we're going to type in host1192.168.1.10, specify the destination address, which is also configured as host1, but with an IP of 2.10. And you want to specify the application. Right now, I'm just gonna do a question mark over here. There are some default applications that you can use. For this, we are just going to use Junos ICMP all because that allows ping. Junos ICMP all. And we're gonna press enter. We can just do a show and here you will see that we have a policy which reads from zone site A to zone site B. We've got a policy name, site A to site B. And we have the source address and the destination address and an application. But we haven't specified what to do with this traffic. Right, so you need a then statement. So you can actually just now edit this policy. So you go edit from zone site A again to zone site B. Policy this one. And you can actually just see the whole policy here. So now we can say set then permit because we want to permit this traffic let's just go through that again so we have a source address host 1 192.168.1.10 a destination address host 1 192.168.2.10 application genus rcmp all then permit okay so now we can just go ahead and do a commit now that the configuration has been committed let's see if we can ping across so from 192.168.1.10, I'm trying to ping 192.168.2.10. And we are still not able to. Right. This is actually a very common mistake a lot of people make when they first start using Juniper Firewall. You need to assign interfaces to security zones as well. So if we have a look at our topology here, we have GE000, which is connecting to site A. And we have GE001 that's connecting to site B. So now what we need to do is we need to assign this interface to the security zone site A. And we need to assign this interface to site B. Right, so let's do that. So we're just going to edit security uh, zone, security zone site A, site A. And how you do that is just say set interfaces, GE. 0, 0, 0, dot 0. I'm going to show you now. Right, and the reason why we use GE000.0, if we do a run show interfaces test, you will see here uh, that GE000 is the one with the IP address. OK, 
Okay. Now we need to do the same for site B. So edit security zones site B. Set interface to GE001.0 as that is the interface connecting to site B. All right. So now if we if we go top again, we have a look at the full configuration. What we have is we've got a security policy with a name site A to site B. We have match criteria, which has the source address of host one at site A, a destination address of host one at site B. We are allowing ping with the permit statement and we have the interfaces in their respective security zones. Okay, so we can do another commit. And whilst that is committing, let us see if we are able to ping across now. And there you go. Now the next thing to check is whether we'd be able to ping 192.168.1.10 from 192.168.2.10. And we are still not able to do that. Okay, so the reason for that is we have a security policy, but it is only in one direction. We have a source address of 192.168.1.10, a destination address of 192.168.2.10, and it is permitted. But we do not have a reverse policy that allows 2.10 to communicate with 1.10. Uh, this being a stateful firewall, return traffic is already permitted. What I mean by return traffic is if traffic is sourced from 192.168.1.10, the return traffic would be permitted. That said, if traffic originates from 192.168.2.10, the traffic is not permitted. So to fix that, we actually just need to configure a reverse policy for these exact statements. So what we can do is we can just edit it in a notepad and I will show you how to do that. So from here, we are just going to reverse everything. So this would be site B. This one would be site A. And we are just going to reverse the source and destination addresses. So this one you can just make as the destination and this one you'll configure as the source. Right, and the policy, yeah, you need to reverse it as well. So site B to site A. This is just a lot easier to, to do it this way. Uh, other than having to type it into the CLI and we can just paste it here. All right, so if we do a show pipe compare, let's just see. All right, so now we have a reverse policy from zone site B to zone site A with a source address of 192.168.2.10, a destination address of 192.168.1.10, Juno's ICMP then permit. All right, let's do a commit. All right, let's go back to 2.10 and see if we can ping now. And there you go. Okay, so the policy we set up, if we go have a look at the SRX again, this only allows ICMP. So Internet Control Message Protocol, so anything related to ICMP would be allowed and ping falls under that. So I actually have websites set up on both of these servers. And I just want to show you that if we want to connect to a website on the other side, what do we need to do to get that to work? So if we do 192.168.2.10, which is the IP address of the host at site B, you'll see that we do not get any response back. Right, so if you want to allow specific applications, you can list a lot more applications under this statement. You can also specify application any, and all applications between these hosts would be allowed. That's a little bit less secure. So we are just going to allow HTTP and HTTPS along with ICMP all. So once again, we go into edit security policies from zone site A to zone site B, because that is where our policy resides. So policy site A to site B. We do a show and from here we can just say set match application and as i mentioned earlier there are predefined applications you can configure your own application set for specific ports but there are already http and https applications predefined 
Right, so here you can see we have Junos HTTP and Junos HTTPS. Okay, so I'm just gonna set match application Junos HTTP and Junos HTTPS. So now if we do a show, you'll see that all the applications that are permitted are in square brackets and these applications would then be permitted. Once again, you just need to make sure of the flow. So this goes from host 1, 192.168.1.10 to 192.168.2.10. Let's just commit that. All right, that's committed. So let's go back into the host 192.168.1.10. So let's try that again. And we're going to try and browse to 192.168.2.10. And there we go. Now I can access the website there. Once again, the security policy is only configured when 192.168.1.10 is the source and 192.168.2.10 is the destination. Just to prove that, I have that same website configured on 1.10 and we are not able to reach it from 2.10. So if you want 2.10 to be able to access the website on 2 on 1.10, you're going to have to do exactly the same just for the policy site B to site A. So once again, we can just go edit security policies from zone. This time it's from site B to site A. And the policy name is the same, just in reverse. And yeah, you, you can just set match application Junos, Junos dash HTTP and Juno's HTTPS. So if we do a show, you'll see that Juno's ICMP all, Juno's HTTP and Juno's HTTPS are all allowed. All right, we do another commit and we go back to 2.10 and we see if we can reach 1.10's website again. 192.168.1.10.1.10. And it's working. All right, I'm just going to show you the full configuration of the SRX here, if you want uh, to make note of this. And this is how you configure policies to work in both ways. So the first thing is you need to configure security zones, assign interfaces to the security zones, create address book entries within the security zone, and then you can set up your policy with a source destination and application. You also need to define an action, which in this case is then permit and you're all set to go. All right, and that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.